I am coming to you uh, this week from the workshop. Uh, so please excuse the mess. This is an actual working workshop. Uh, I remember those of you who are old enough back in the day to remember uh, Emeril Lagasse when he was on the Food Network and he would be cooking and he would say, you know, we're really cooking here. The stove really works. Well, this is a working shop. But we're here this week because we are uh, not working at the cottage. We've, we've, I, June is kind of a month that there's a lot going on, so I don't know how much work we're going to get done up there. But work continues, so we have a couple of things going on. We are working on uh, paint colors for outside. We're going to talk about that in another episode. But this week we're gonna, we're continuing to talk about the kitchen. Last time you saw the floor go down. We're waiting on the plumber to come. He's going to do his thing, and then we have some more work to do inside. But in the meantime, we're talking about layout. We're talking about how we're going to lay the kitchen out, where we're going to put things. And we've already started to purchase, I'm going to step out of the way here, some uh, kitchen cabinets. Now, you can't really see them great from that angle, so bear with me and we'll, we'll get a better uh, look at things. But I wanted to, uh, we're going to start with the, with the one. This is the most recent purchase. In fact, I just took it out of the back of the car before I started filming. So this is brand new. Uh, to us. The other one that's here that you can't really see yet, we've had this for a while. This was actually the first thing we bought for the cottage. In fact, we may have even bought it before we bought the cottage. <laughs> I think we've had this one for a while. So what we're trying to do is we want to sort of recreate a vintage look uh, in the cottage. So as you know, the cottage dates from 1873. As we discussed last time, the addition is probably early 30s between 1930 and 1933, based on the newspaper uh, clipping that we found. Uh, so, and also based on the wideness of the boards and the cut nails that were used and things like that. So we're looking at about the 1930s. So we're going for a vintage look in the kitchen to the 40s and 50s, sometime in that decade between the 40s and 50s. Uh, so uh, we're looking for cabinetry from that time frame. We're, the appliances that we gonna, that we will eventually have will look vintage. They're not going to be vintage appliances because there's a whole host of problems with buying vintage appliances. Uh, but we're going to purchase vintage looking, brand new vintage looking appliances which you can still get. And we're gonna talk, we'll talk about that um, at another time. But I want to start by talking about this cabinet that we bought because this cabinet is absolutely fabulous and we found out something new about it uh, before we even uh, got to this point when we were just looking through it after we took it out of the car. So um, I have some notes because if you recall from the last episode um, I couldn't remember uh, the bloke's name that was in the photo. I also said I was going to put his photo in the in the video and it never made it. So I have some notes. I have some note cards about both of these uh, pieces so excuse me uh, if I if I read it. So we always try to date things. We're always thinking about what the date is and we look for certain clues. And one of the clues that we look for is the laminate that's on the top. All right. So uh, bear with me for a moment as I sort of jiggle around how I'm going to do things. All right. So this laminate that's here, you see it's a, a yellow color uh, laminate. This is called uh, cracked ice. And it's one of the first designs of laminate that was on the market. And it dates from uh, about 1930 into the 50s, early uh, 1950s. And so this is uh, cracked ice. Wilson art, which is a sort of modern, uh, I, I can't see what you're seeing, but so there's the, there's the Formica, so I'll turn this back around. So Wilson art, uh, which is a sort of a modern uh, laminate maker, still makes reproduction cracked ice in four colors. Yellow, which is the color that we have here. Uh, red, dark green, and gray. So uh, um, we'll try to get a close look at it here so you can see kind of the design. 
on it. Some of the other features are the metal strip that's here, uh, as well as the strip that's that's down here, and we're gonna we'll talk about that in a second. So this cabinet is wood. Um, it's plywood uh, mostly, uh, I think, which also helps us uh, to date it. It's got the two drawers here, uh, nice wooden. Uh, they're not dovetailed, but there's nice joinery here. So, um, so it's a good strong drawer for the drawer front. There's lots of room under here. There's various uh, hanging whatnots and things. Um, we picked this up. It was loaded with bird seed. There was uh, all kinds of bird seed, and I don't know uh, how it could in. There's four drawers over here, and this is the exciting bit that we came across uh, when we took it out of the car and we were sort of going through it. This drawer. It's a bread drawer. That's a bread uh, bread drawer right there. It's lined with tin and uh, it's still there. So that's pretty cool. So it's actually a metal drawer. The whole drawer is metal and it has a wood front on it uh, attached by some screws right there. Uh, so that's that was kind of a cool discovery. We didn't know that was on there. So we don't know sort of where where these are going to go in the overall design yet. Uh, I think we know more about the second one, about where that's going to go uh, than we do uh, sort of about this one. All right, so let's talk about this other one. Now this one that's here, this is metal. The whole cabinet's metal and it's got this top on it, a laminate top, just like the other one. The difference is, is this has the square design. This has more of a bullnose design. The backsplash is not as high, as you can see between the two. And this is a complete metal backsplash where this is wood covered in laminate with the metal strip here. This kind of rolls, bullnoses over and comes down and rolls off into the laminate. So this laminate, as you can probably imagine just by looking at it, is called Boomerang. And this is an original from Formica. It was called Skylark until about the 1950s. So let's talk a little bit about um, the Skylark brand and how it came to be. So Skylark, or what we are, are, are now calling the Boomerang pattern, uh, began in 1950 and it was designed by industrial designer Brooks Stevens. And he was known for his work on industrial things like uh, trains, boats, and cars. And he created the uh, Skylark pattern. And remember, it was originally called Skylark. He created the uh, Skylark pattern capturing the buoyant optimism of the time period. So, he, so we got that going for us. And uh, it was a, uh, a graphic uh, intervention that established Formica as a, as, a, uh, as a prominent brand. Now here's what's interesting to me. So growing up, anything, any kind of laminate we call Formica, right? It's like Kleenex, right? The, the, the tissues, right? It's Kleenex is the brand and we call anything that pops up out of a box like that, it's a Kleenex, right? Get me Kleenex. We don't say get me a, you know, supermarket tissue or whatever, we call it a Kleenex. Well, Formica, some of you may know this, this was like I was today days old when I learned this, that Formica is a brand, not a product. It's a brand that makes products, it makes laminate, but we call it all Formica. So there it is. So the story continues though, we don't end there. So in the 1950s, another designer, a friend of uh, Brooke Stevens, uh, Raymond Lowry, he designed new colors for Skylark's, uh, Skylark as part of his Sunrise collection and eventually changed the name to Boomerang, which is what we have here. So we can date this from at least 1954 and maybe perhaps a little bit later. Um, and so we're not sure who the manufacturer of the, of the actual cabinet is on this one, the wooden cabinet, the first one we showed you. But we do know who the maker of the metal cabinet is. So again, this is the boomerang pattern, and you can tell because it has the distinctive boomerangs. Now, this is made in reproduction, but it's only made in a darker color than this. 
it, it, it exists um, in a darker color. It, you can still get it. Um, it's just not as, um, I don't want to say as colorful as this because this really isn't colorful, but it's a lot darker uh, than this. And we're not looking to go darker. We actually want to go uh, lighter than this. So it's always interesting to figure out. So here I'll show you a few more characteristics. So this obviously the cabinet was white. It, it started its life as white. What we've learned is most metal cabinets anyways were white. They were created in white. Maybe it was the cheapest color. Uh, it went with everything. It could be painted afterwards without too much effort. But as you notice, the front of the cabinet is now yellow. But interestingly enough, if you want to figure out who the manufacturer is of these things, you look for a tag. And so inside the door, right there, you see it's Youngstown Kitchens from Salem, Ohio, a Mullins Manufacturing Corporation. Youngstown Kitchens, as we've learned, made a ton of these metal cabinets. And they're all over the place. They're everywhere. Uh, but this one is very spacious. It has a big thing here. And the big opening, big cabinet there. This drawer is fabulous. It's like you get your whole family right in this drawer. This drawer is big. And then there's a smaller drawer here. And they slide. These drawers slide. You know, even if this is from later than 1954. But this is an old cabinet. And the drawers all still slide pretty good. And the box itself is in good shape. It needs a little cleanup. It needs to be painted a little bit. So we're not sure on colors yet. Uh, so that's the other, uh, that's for another discussion. But we also uh, really like these uh, handles. These are the right handles. Um, these handles that are on this cabinet are the right ones, but we're not so sure about the knobs. They're the same color, but they don't look like they went uh, with the cabinet, but we're not sure on that one. So we have to do a little bit more uh, inspection on that. So now the thing that's left is we have the cabinets. Now we sort of build the kitchen around it, right? We're not really sure where things are going to go. Our initial thought was that the boomerang cabinet was going to go centered on the windows at the back of the kitchen. When you first walk in, we would center it there. And that would be sort of the end of the cabinetry. So there would be the refrigerator past that. There would be this boomerang cabinet. There would be a transition cabinet in the corner, stove, a smaller cabinet next to that, a sink cabinet, and then a space on the end with a countertop on it, a space on the end. But underneath that space will be a combination washer and dryer. So we're going to attempt to put a washer and dryer in the cottage. Uh, the plumber's going to plumb for it. The electrician's going to run the wires for it. It's probably not going to go in this year, maybe not even next year, but we have to have the space for it if we want to do it. And the idea is, is that both of these tops will come off. We'll remove both tops from these cabinets and we'll have one seamless uh, countertop that will run around the whole thing. And however, with that, we are going to look for the reproduction uh, laminate. So we're leaning towards the cracked ice and we will do the same details that are on here. So this will be the backsplash. We're going to, this um, metal edging is still available. It's created by Eagle uh, Metal Manufacturing. All the pieces you can get, all reproductions, uh, you, you buy it in, in lengths and you cut it and form it around uh, your edges. So uh, it will look similar to this, maybe not this particular color, but it will look similar to this, but the whole countertop will be in the same. So it's not going to be boomerang and then this. If we could get this pattern in a light in this same color, we probably would go with this. But because it's not really available in this color, it's the color that it comes in is, is just way too dark. So one of the possibilities is one of these cabinets might become the cabinet that holds the sink. Uh, but we're not wedded to that either. This is going to be one of those times when we have to bring both of these cabinets up to the cottage, put them in the space and kind of move them around and see uh, and see what we're thinking. We have a temporary sink that will go in now um, and then we'll kind of build off of that. So that's uh, so the design plan is working. It's just a matter now of of placing these cabinets in the right place and uh, see where it's going to go. Blue painter's tape is your friend uh, in this instance. The idea is we will mark everything out on the floor. 
so we get an idea of where it is. We'll get an idea of the flow and see if we like it and if we like where it is. We will uh, strip, sand, and paint the cabinets here and then bring them. Oh no, sorry. That's what we, originally we were going to do that. We're going to do it different. We're going to strip and sand them and prepare them here, but we're going to paint them there mainly because we're afraid that they'll get dinged and marked up in transit from the workshop here to the cottage. So we'll paint them there, obviously, before the floor goes down in the kitchen. We have that big space. Uh, they probably will be white and only white because it's easier to touch up white. So it'll be, and, and originally they were white. So we'll go back to kind of the white uh, look. So that's where we are right now. So next time, we're gonna look at outside paint colors. We've talked a little bit about it. We did a little archeological dig into a board that we had, and we've discovered uh, the original paint color. Mm. So uh, we're, we're gonna talk about paint colors next time, because as we mentioned before, I think we're looking at a minimum of four, perhaps five, maybe even six different paint colors. If you remember the episode where I showed you some samples, you'll get an idea uh, of what we're looking at. All right, so I got a little, a little homework for you guys to do. What I'd like you to do in the comments down below is we mentioned that the cracked ice comes in uh, yellow. I gotta find my card. I gotta find my card here again. Yellow, red, dark green, and gray. Now keep in mind, the cabinets will be white. The floor is a sort of a charcoaly blue look, uh, sort of a grayish blue look, and that's, we're going back with that color. Walls will be white. So walls will be white, cabinets will be white. Floor is kind of a, not a dark gray, but a, but a charcoaly blue color. So what color do you think we should use uh, for the cat? Oh, the uh, stove is gonna be white. I believe the washer and dryer uh, will be white. And I'm not sure what the refrigerator color is gonna be yet. So what color should the cracked ice countertop be? All right, your, your choices are yellow, red, dark green, and gray. So vote down below in the comments, leave some comments and some colors and let us know what you think. And uh, we'll reveal what you guys think next time. I'm not sure we're gonna reveal where we're going, but we'll talk about what you guys uh, are thinking about. While you're down there leaving a comment, if you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button, ding the little bell so you remember uh, that we're here. And uh, sorry for the lateness of this episode. I try to get them out on Saturday, but we didn't make it this week. I'm not sure we're going to make it next week. And uh, uh, But we've got some stuff coming up. So hang in there and uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.